The only real differentiator other than our serial number is our file names. Her file names are R, Y, B, A, I think. Um, and mine, I changed in my camera, so they actually say SFP underscore and then the number. Uh, so we're gonna take that serial number, go over to the library, um, and we're gonna create a new uh, smart album, shortcut key. Anyone? Shift. Shift command L. Yeah, Anthony okay. nailed it. Okay, perfect. And then in this one, I'm gonna put camera two. And I'm just gonna put, since I know whose is whose, I'm gonna put Sarah on this one if I'm looking for um, my particular camera. I'm gonna go to add rule, go down to EXIF, select EXIF, and then we want serial number again. You can also, by the way, do this much quicker by just duplicating the one that we already had. <laughs> but I wanted to make sure you guys got a reiteration of how you would do it. Serial number is, plug that serial number in, make sure you're on the right Aperture um, project. And then we can close that. So now we have all of my images um, in one folder and all of Jessica's images in a separate folder for the behind the scenes. And if I want to time sync now, um, I need to basically look for two distinguishing photos right at the same time. If you're doing a portrait session, this is a little bit tougher. You can look for that like one moment that they, that they kissed Kisses are always great. Engagement photo session kisses can be a little longer than wedding. Um, we just got married kisses are, are usually a little bit more, uh, are a little bit quicker. So, but those two areas are always great places to look um, just to make sure that you grab that one moment. Uh, it's Like I said, it's gonna be a little bit harder to find in this but we'll see if we can find a distinguishing photo. But let's just say, let me find a photo where they kiss. I don't really have my engagement couples kiss that much, so. <laughs> but this was a very kissy couple. So let's just say that this was um, the kiss shot that we were looking at, and we, we were looking at those two photos. So the thing that I would grab first off, I'd be like, okay, this is the moment that I wanna make sure is on time. I'd go over to info and I would jot down the time that this file was taken. So this is um, 3.42 and 41 seconds. 3.42 and 41 seconds, I have to remember that one. So uh, Rachel wrote it down for us though, so we can recall it there. 3.41, 42, and then we'll find that same moment if she has it or something similar. So the time when it was shot would have been right around here. Okay, so let's just say that this is the same moment because um, we don't have the exact same moment because she was doing behind the scenes. But if you were making this 341.42, we would select this photo and then hit Command A to select the rest of them. But see how this one's highlighted? It's more featured, and then the rest of them are selected as well. And we're gonna go up to um, batch change. And, let's see, oh, sorry, this is the wrong one. This is where you change the file names. <clears throat> time saying adjust time. Adjust date and time. I knew you were in there. So it's right under metadata, adjust date and time. And this is where we're gonna change it. So it was 3.42 and 43 seconds? 41 seconds. Ah, so close. 41 seconds. Um, and then you can also change the original files if you want. I'm not going to in this case because the files um, are just being adjusted so that you can see it. Um, but you can also change the original files right there. There's no real reason not to. I, I think I, I would in any other case. And then you can just hit adjust and it'll adjust all of those timestamps. And now when I look through the images, you'll be able to see that was the image right before it. It was 342 and 40 seconds. And then we have 342 and 41 seconds. And then three. So it adjusts every single one um, just based off of how off it was from the last one.